Hi, I'm Arius Vriedis, the CTO at Nord Security. And I'm Justina Tomulevicute, Risk Manager at Nord Security. Welcome to the fourth Cyber Review episode where we will highlight news from the past. So without further ado, let's start with the most significant story. Last month, the world was rocked by the news of possibly one of the largest personal data leaks in history. The anonymous internet user named China Dan posted an announcement on the dark web forum Breach Forums offering an opportunity to buy more than 23 terabytes of the Chinese citizens' data stolen from the Shanghai National Police. The asking price for the entire 23 terabyte database was 10 Bitcoin worth around $200,000. Along with this announcement, the hacker leaked a sample that perfectly contained 750,000 records. This data included names, addresses, phone numbers, and police reports. Moreover, it listed full web addresses, leading to a server storing photos of a person's identity documents, residency documentation, and more. It turned out that the Shanghai Police database was accessible freely for more than a year, from April 2021 until mid-June of 2022, when the database was wiped out and replaced with a ransom note asking Shanghai police for 10 bitcoins for a return dataset and simultaneously hauled up for sale in breach forms. As news of the hack spread, people began posting on Chinese social media platforms such as WeChat and Weibo. Unfortunately, since the freedom of speech and expression is tightly controlled in China, many, but not all, breach-related news, posts, mentions and messages were removed. As of today, it is not entirely clear how the data was leaked, but some cybersecurity experts say that the leak has come from a misconfigured Alibaba cloud server that wasn't password protected. It is an excellent reminder that having a password, especially a strong and unique one, is a must. Unfortunately, it's not just China that had password-related issues last month. It seems like British Army also struggled with securing their login information. Indeed, the British Army YouTube and Twitter accounts were breached to promote cryptocurrency videos and posts related to collectible electronic art. Their Twitter account with over 366,000 followers was flooded with NFT-related posts and retweeted links to NFT giveaways. And on top of that, there was even a tweet saying, we are attacking Pakistan. Meanwhile, the British Army's YouTube channel, with more than 178,000 subscribers, was taken into promote cryptocurrency. The hacker deleted all the account's videos and replaced them with Tesla founder Elon Musk talks about cryptocurrency and video descriptions directing users to crypto scam websites. Soon after, the British Army confirmed the security incident and apologized for the temporary interruption to their feed, it is unclear who is behind the hacks and how exactly the breach happened. Some cybersecurity experts claim that it happened because of profile sharing among multiple admins, risky outsourcing and a failure to update passwords regularly. Others speculate that a screen grab or a printout may have caused the incident. We hope your ongoing investigation will quickly shed light on the real cause of this incident and will help avoid similar accidents in the future. From here, let's move on to the last piece of news from the last month. July was shocking for Android users after cybersecurity experts discovered that dozens of apps available for download on Google Play Store were running malware. One of the malware discovered was Autolycos. It masqueraded as a camera, video editor, or keyboard apps that together have over 3 million installs and secretly subscribed users to premium services. Another bunch of apps discovered was distributing Joker malware. Apps like Water Reminder, Yoga from Beginner to Advanced, Focal Launcher, 4K Pro Camera, and others were posed as photography, personalization, communication, health, and smartphone programs. Despite providing their promised functionality, they secretly stole device information, SMS messages, and contact lists, and subscribed victims to premium services without their knowledge and consent. And that's not all. The third category of adware and malware-infested apps was distributed in image editing, call, messaging, and other smartphone tools. Apps with several million downloads such as Chat Online, Neon Theme Keyboard, and others were designed to subscribe users to premium services, push intrusive ads, and steal users' social media accounts. Unfortunately, Google hasn't removed all of them from Google Play yet. And if you are aware of having any of the listed software on your phone, Uninstall now and perform a virus scan to ensure nothing has left behind. 
to check out if you have malicious apps on your phone, monitor your internet data usage and battery consumption, keep the Google Play protection function on, and try to minimize the number of smartphone programs you install on your mobile device. And remember that keeping an eye on your mobile phone and what you install is as important as arming your devices and accounts with strong passwords that protect them from hacking. So stay safe and thanks for watching. If you like this episode, hit the thumbs up icon and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn to get the latest news from Nord Security. Bye-bye!